my name is Marisol Garcia. I'm the current president of the Arizona Education Association and a proud eighth grade social studies teacher. Um, and I am joined by AEA members from all over the state. Yeah. North and south, east and west, uh, rural to urban schools. Uh, they are here on their spring break to meet with legislators, share their stories, and then make it very clear that we believe it is time to act to save public education in our state. Um, I, I couldn't be prouder of them coming down on their break because I know I used to like to stay home and uh, rest and sleep and, and catch up on Netflix. Uh, but I appreciate that they're here. Uh, I have three members uh, that are going to share with you some stories so they can contextualize what, what's happening in our public schools and the reality of what we need in our public schools from the people who are living it day by day. Not from uh, talking points, not from polling, and no, with no interest in getting reelected next year. Uh, these folks want to share their stories and have solutions for what we need. So first, I'm going to introduce Anna Andrews, a teacher from the Madison Classified Teachers Association, but most importantly, a teacher in the Madison School District. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anna Andrews. I have been teaching public school for 14 years as a 7th and 8th grade social studies teacher. Um, I've had a lot of experience and seen a lot of stories. Um, having been in the association as long as I have, I've seen state officials over the past 14 years trying to cover up systemic wounds of public education with band-aids. Over the last decade, I've watched multiple teachers and support staff walk out less than halfway through the year. Over the last two years in particular, I know of at least four educators in my district, including at my school, who couldn't even get through the first week. Young teachers are leaving after only a year or two, oftentimes with tears in their eyes. These are people who went to school passionate about public education, passionate about kids, passionate about being a part of their community and making a difference. And after a year or two, feeling so burnt and undercompensated and unappreciated, not by our district staff, not by our district administration, but by policy, and feeling as though they are stuck in a system where they're trying to start a life for themselves and they're never going to be able to catch up with their friends fiscally or financially and be able to join them during times. And when they have to leave and make that decision that they can't sustain a teacher's salary, they get very emotional. The hardest part, too, is watching the students, especially middle school students, who will develop stories about just about everything, but they will also find a way to blame it on themselves. When they are coming back to visit their former teachers and they had just left the middle school two years ago and only three of their former teachers from fifth through eighth grade are still at the school, they ask me all the time, was it us? Were we that bad? <laughs> and having to look at them in the eyes and say, no, it wasn't you, is very difficult because kids need that reliability. They need those returning teachers. They need people who feel safe and confident in their jobs that they can make a career out of it and be treated like professionals to be sticking around. Our salaries cannot keep up with inflation and or a decent standard of living. However, the workload, the unfunded mandates, the stress, the unrealistic expectations, those are things that significantly increase every year. Districts have found themselves having to compete against each other for staff, which is sad because in the world of public education, districts should be working each other and building each other up to make public education the best for every kid in Arizona. So there is an urgent need for action from our elected officials. And at AEA, we ask that all legislative leadership raise pay for all teachers and school staff through a renewal of Proposition 123. We ask that Governor Hobbs and state legislators ensure that this year's budget protects funding for public schools and reins in ESA vouchers. And we're calling on all Arizona elected officials to include us in discussions and decisions about public education and to treat us with the dignity and respect that we deserve. I'm sick of seeing Band-Aids. It's time for real solutions to real problems. So please do right by Arizona's children.
Thank you, Anna. Your students are going to be so proud tomorrow. <laughs> All right, uh, our next speaker is Ana Badia, a proud member of the Tucson Education Association and longtime classified employee uh, of the Tucson Unified School District. Hi, my name is Ana Badia, and I am a proud ESP. I am an essential support professional. I am a finance manager and a 17-year employee at the Tucson Unified School District. I have seen my school go from a strong, thriving school where doctors and lawyers came from. Students loved going to school. They learned not only from great teachers, some college professors, but also enough teachers. Mm -hmm. There was no shortage. Teaching was a proud profession. Now, it is a starving profession. Many teachers and essential support professionals, like myself, work one to two jobs along our regular jobs. There was a time where I personally worked my 40 hours a week at work. I coached. I worked games. I was an on-call juvenile detention officer. I also worked with a security company to work special events. Now that was just to make ends meet. Oh yeah, my husband, he was also a coach and a teacher. In 2018, I lost my husband. I honestly thought I was gonna lose my house. I called upon my daughter and I said, you may have to move back in and help me make ends meet. Even though she was willing to do so, <laughs> education, working in education, should not be this hard. Mm -hmm. A few years ago now, my school, it, is this on? For a few years now, my school is constantly working on a skeleton crew. Not enough teachers in the classroom. Not enough ESPs in the offices. Not enough security, not enough monitors, not enough custodians. Now with the ESA vouchers, it's even worse. I am asking you to protect our public school funding. I'll say it again, public school funding. Yeah. Rain in those high cost of those ESA vouchers. Do not only take, those ESA vouchers do not only take public school funding and give it away to private schools, but after 45 days, when those students cannot succeed in those environments, they come back to public schools. And we don't get extra funding for that. We deal with what we have. Now, Proposition 123. It, this was not the perfect proposition to begin with. Properly funding schools would be perfect. But education, it, Proposition 123 did not segregate. It included all educators. It included all ESPs and alongside our teachers. I ask you, Raise the pay for all educators, all teachers, and ESPs together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. I think Anna is a perfect example of when we are down here talking about the impact of these cuts on schools, you will hear people trying to score political points by just saying, I'm gonna, I want to raise it just for teachers. They're the most important. The reality is, is I can't do my job as a teacher without 30 Annas at my site. The schools aren't safe without 30 Annas being paid an equitable wage. And not only that, but she shouldn't have to have three jobs so that I can try to do one. All right, our last speaker is Delia Leading from Kyrene. Uh, and I'm so proud to have her here as a leader, but also somebody who's going to be able to share another story of why we are down here. Delia?
Hello, my name is Delia Lighting, and I'm a proud public school educator in Arizona. I have worked for the Kyrene School District for 17 years. I began my career when budget cuts to public education were at their deepest. At the beginning of my career, we saw an end to funding for full day kindergarten, essentially slashing instructional assistance from our classrooms, eliminating teaching positions causing higher class sizes, and in my own district, implementing a reduction in force to make up for the dismal budget we were given. This was nearly 20 years ago. Not much has changed. Full day kindergarten is still unfunded and class sizes are still way too high. What's different today, now, in my classroom, all across Arizona, is that we have we don't have enough educators in our school buildings. We don't have enough educators in our districts. Our classrooms do not have highly qualified educators to teach all of our students. The reason remains the same. Educators cannot afford to teach in our public schools today and support themselves and their families, causing them to leave our classrooms at a rate we cannot sustain. Where I work, we have gotten raises over the past years that barely covers inflation. Mm -hmm. I have known way too many outstanding educators that have left education completely because of their salary and the lack of respect and dignity it brings to our profession. Just recently, I saw one of our educators working at Costco. My initial thought was, oh, this must be her second or her third job because it's completely normal for a public school educator to have <laughs> multiple jobs in this state. Mm -hmm. When we spoke, I learned that this amazing teacher of art was not teaching at all anymore. She had walked away from her passion. She informed me that she gets paid more, has better benefits, and less, a whole lot less stress working outside of education. This broke my heart and infuriated me. What a loss for our students, our community, and our profession. This is just one of the many experiences we deal with every day. I guarantee you each educator standing behind me can tell you a similar story happening in their own schools and in their own districts. The state of education right now is that educators are being told to do more with less, less teachers, less assistance, less counselors, less bus drivers, less time. Our students need more than what we are equipped to give them. They deserve more than what is given. In light of all of the issues we've spoken about today, teacher retention, higher class sizes, living wages for all in education, there is an urgent need for action from our elected officials. We're calling on our legislative leadership to raise pay for all teachers and all school staff through a renewal of Prop 123. We are calling on Governor Hobbs and state legislators to ensure that this year's budget protects funding for public schools and reins in ESA vouchers. We're yes. calling. We're calling on all Arizona elected officials to include us in discussions and decisions about public education and to treat us with the dignity and the respect that we deserve. Our budget shows what we prioritize and what we value. It's time to value Arizona's children and families who choose public education. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Delia. So here we are. This is the state of public education in Arizona right now. We are overworked, underpaid, and under-respected. This is not the old profession that my mom entered in 1970. Anna matters. Delia matters. Anna Andrews matters. Our lives and our impact in our communities are strong and we need a commitment from the legislature and Governor Hobbs as we move forward. This instability of every year not knowing what our pay is, not knowing who's coming back, not knowing what classroom we're going to be in, not knowing if schools are going to close, that instability translates in our ability to do what's very best 
for the most important C in Arizona, our children. It's time to make that a priority, both these houses and upstairs. We want to make sure that any discussion regarding the reauthorization of 123 has educators at the table. Educators at the table. We need to be part of this plan that can help not only sustain our schools, but make them stronger and healthier and the center of our communities as they always have been. We need to get rid of the voucher and ESA program and have a deep conversation of how this happened and what can we do to ensure that taxpayer funding is safe. And most important, I think for all of us, is the urgency to act now. Enough already. We came down in 2018, thousands of us. We're ready to come back down again because we need voices to be heard. An election year has a lot of voices, right? We need you back down here. We know it's an election year. We know promises are going to be made, but we're going to make sure that folks act now and don't expect us to vote for them in November. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, sorry. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, no, we have not had, uh, so the question was, have we been able to meet with the legislative leaders um, and the Republican side regarding Proposition 1, 2, 3? The answer is no. Today we did meet with a lot of folks who, uh, legislators, both Democrat and Republican, who had committed to vote for the current bill, um, and we were hoping to share those stories on why it was so important uh, to make sure that we were at the table during those discussions. No, it, it, yeah, Superintendent Horn has unfortunately uh, the wrong solution to a problem that we can all agree on, which is that we need more support in our schools. What we need and what he's citing is teachers saying it's not just salary, but it's support. And support doesn't mean kicking out kids who are having a difficult time in our classroom, down the hall, or out of our building. What we need is more adults. We need counselors, we need social workers, I need smaller class sizes, I need to make sure my kids have food, that they have a safe house to go to, that, that they have everything they need to walk in refreshed to get the best amazing lesson I'm going to present to them on the, the Ninth Amendment, which I know they all remember to this day. <laughs> but they need that safety to come in and put everything aside. It does not include kicking out. There are kids that are struggling. But it's the behavior that needs attention, not the children that need to be kicked out. We're hoping to fix this bill to get more support, funding, adults to help us deal with that. I get it, but I, I, don't, I don't think we consider any of our students out of hand. What we consider is our students are struggling, and we see them every day. Uh, some of us, eight hours a day. So we're the people that they're going to take it out on, or the situations. So what we need is to create systems and situations for them to thrive. They need to make sure that they have a stability in their classroom, smaller class sizes, more counselors, food. They need, some of them need clothes. Those are all things that contribute to the behaviors, not the children, the behaviors that we need to fix. We also did have social emotional learning. As you know, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, Tom Horn and a lot of people running for office were using terms that we think were not appropriately used. Everyone has different definitions for that. Most schools want to work and make sure kids stay in school, have great, safe schools. Um, and so, unfortunately, I, we disagree with him on that. Yeah, I mean, I think at the beginning of the legislative session, Governor Hobbs made it very clear that there were almost, I think, 11 things we needed to work on um, as a parent and as a, as, a for, as a reporter, as somebody who has children in their classrooms. The most important thing is, is that the, any adult that is around a child or receiving any sort of ESA voucher funding should be fingerprinted. And criminal background checks. This should be a gimme. 
So that should be something that immediately everyone should agree with. We need to make sure that this is transparent. I'm a taxpayer. Ask anyone here. We know exactly where all the money that is given from the state goes to because there's open, democratically elected school board members having open school board meetings. None of that is happening through the ESA voucher program. And we also need to talk about particularly our students who are gifted or who have special education needs that are not receiving them because we have no idea what's going on beyond here's a check, turn in a receipt. It's more than that. Our kids are way more important than that and deserve more than that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. All right, guys. If you want um, to see you. head over. And if press yeah. want individual yeah. interviews with anyone who spoke, stick around and we can see if we can make that happen. It'll just depend on schedule. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Uh, all is forgiven. <laughs>